really relax. <laughs> Anxiety, a mental health disorder that plagues millions of individuals across many different walks of life. It's a feeling of worry, nervousness, or unease affecting those mentally and physiologically. Generally, it's a racing heartbeat, um, sweating, sometimes an inappropriate emotional response, laughing, crying, um, getting extremely angry, um, and then tremors start it, it's like like painful in like my chest and it kind of gets hard to focus and it's just really hard to just do anything and it's just it's just hard to think I start to get all itchy I start scratching myself uh, I start sweating a little bit uh, and then uh, since I have asthma I start like coughing a lot and that kind of stuff physiologically there's a surge and it's different for different people. So for some people, it's a flush reaction. For some people, it's tightening in their stomach. Um, oftentimes, it can be rapid heartbeat, problems with breathing. There's a host of different experiences that people have physiologically. Some are so severe that people recognize that it's a panic attack, and others just um, aren't certain. Um, Additionally, sometimes it can be so severe that people feel like they're having a heart attack, but those symptoms seem so familiar to a heart attack that people will often go down to the hospital thinking they're having a heart attack, and then they get checked out and they find out that they're fine and that it was indeed a panic attack. Many people have stories about the day it all began for them. I suspect that I probably had it in high school, unfortunately, when I first became diagnosed with with an illness. Um, anxiety wasn't figured in there, um, mostly because I didn't know that's really what I was experiencing. Um, I thought I was having a heart attack. That's quite honestly what it felt like. Um, I had, my chest felt like it was ready to explode. Um, I couldn't breathe. Um, the room started spinning. Um, there was like a, a ringing in my ear. It was awful. <laughs> I think I've had it my whole life. I just own, I think, but I realized it more like when I was like a teenager because I realized I wasn't just like, like a, just a scared kid, you know? I first started developing anxiety around the seventh grade. Uh, there's, there had been a lot going on in my life, a lot of turning points in my life, and I'd never really experienced anxiety up to that point. It really started to get to me. I didn't know how to handle myself. Despite good intentions, those unaware may try to help those suffering, but unfortunately, the average person's idea of help will only serve in making things worse. I think touching me is a big trigger. Um, that is seen in a moment of panic. Um, all of your senses are so heightened that somebody coming at you or touching you um, without Maybe your knowledge, because when I have a panic attack, it, I become so self-focused that I block everything else out, all incoming stimuli. So if I'm suddenly and randomly touched by somebody, even my husband's putting a hand on my back, um, that is very terrifying in that moment. Somebody's touching me, who is it, what's going on? Um, so maybe just step back and let me breathe. Tell me to calm down. <laughs> because ideally, if I could, I would. <laughs> I think that people while well-intentioned and seeing someone um, become anxious and have a panic attack their the first inclination is to tell someone to calm down um, that I have not found to be as helpful as allowing me to identify what is potentially triggering the panic attack just just to say that just to like act like it like, act like it's nothing like just to kind of ignore it and be like, it'll go away. Because I've had, like, some of the people in my family also have anxiety and they have panic attacks. And one of my best friends has it too. 
and like I know that a lot of times when they have it like they'll have it like in like public or something and like people are just like oh just just calm down just like you're fine you know they, they just kind of like brush it off like it's nothing when they say be a man when they say suck it up um, when they say oh I don't want to be your friend because you're acting this way when you're acting that way when you feel that way, you really need someone by your side to say, hey, it's going to be okay. And when people aren't like that, it's a really bad feeling. Like, I, I feel alone. I feel sad and depressed. The wrong ways to help someone with a panic attack would include a sense of judgment or minimizing what they're going through. So telling somebody simply to stop or get over yourself or it's not as bad as you think. Because again, physiologically, there's this surge in the body that happens. And so a sense of judgment can actually make it even worse and, and likely exacerbate the experience for somebody. With anxiety, there comes a stigma from society. The idea that people affected should just calm down or worse, simply get over it. We live in a society that really stigmatizes mental illness or mental health issues, whether it's anxiety, panic, depression, bipolar, any of those issues. And so what happens is there's a level of judgment that goes with that as if the person has somehow caused it themselves or the person should just be able to get over it themselves versus if someone was diabetic, we wouldn't just tell them to think their blood sugar's down or you know, blame them for being diabetic. Um, it would be the same if somebody's asthmatic or if somebody's epileptic. And if they have, you know, an epileptic has a seizure or somebody with asthma has an asthma attack, we don't ask what you did or how you caused it. We just simply understand that they have a condition that their body's responding to. Well, mostly people just like, they, they don't really, they think it's just like, oh, you're just overre overreacting to things. Like, they're like, if I don't, like, I'm like, I don't want to go somewhere because like, I, I'm like, you know, they they think that it's just, I'm overre uh, overreacting and they think that like, it's just, oh, you can get over it and it's not that bad and just, you know, just be calmer, but you, you know, it's, you can't really, but I, they just don't get it. Some say it has grown more common in the 21st century with the millennial generation. However, that couldn't be any further from the truth. Anxiety and panic are certainly not new. So individuals who may say that it's a millennial issue are um, quite uninformed. Anxiety and panic has been around for decades and probably centuries. Um, my own mother who passed away at 83 suffered severely with anxiety throughout her entire life. Um, so clearly not a new issue at all. I do think that there's some millennial issues that um, increase anxiety for folks. Well, I think it's because, I think people say that because like the older generation, like I think that they didn't like, they were like, they grew up thinking that it was like not okay to be like that. Like, not like, it's like if you were, if you acted like that or like if you felt like that, like it wasn't, it wasn't a good reason not to, or like to be, you shouldn't be anxious for like no reason. And so I think that they think that because we now know like what it is and that we're like more aware of it and like people are more like, I wouldn't say, well, not everyone's like accepting of it, but like since I think that since like it's more of like a common thing now that people know that it's, it's just anxiety, um, that I think that they're like, oh, it's only like millennials, you know? I'm definitely not a millennial, and I have clearly had anxiety issues. Um, but I do have a 22-year-old daughter who has struggled with anxiety issues of her own. Um, and the two of us collaborating, I, I don't find that it's restricted to an age group. I, I think that there is a tremendous amount of pressure placed on millennials and young people going out into the world this you know this day and age to 
oh, what are you going to do with the rest of your life? And what are you going to do with that? And what are you going to do with this? And I think that for me, I have found the what if rabbit hole really conducive to panic attacks. Because <laughs> I see what my daughter goes through and when her anxiety kicks in and the, you know, the stresses of the, the peers and the, the college requirements and the what's my future going to look like and how is this going to happen. And I think everyone gets anxiety, uh, whether it just be about school, whether it be about a relationship, but whether it be about anything. I think everyone's experienced at least one point in your life. It's something everyone gets affected by. I, I don't think it's restricted to one generation. I think everyone a lot of times experienced it, whether it's little things or big things. Everyone experiences anxiety at some point. Unlike the common cold, anxiety isn't something one will experience and then have go away. It's a constant burden on the minds of those affected. Anxiety is many things to those affected, but at the end of the day, it's an emotional seizure that they become ensnared in, creating a stigma within themselves. I am by far my worst critic. So I'm constantly wondering, am I going to be able to handle this? Am I going to be a failure? Am I going to freak out in the middle of whatever activity I plan for that day. Basically when society tells me uh, to suck it up, be a man, I think to myself, why aren't, why aren't I ever like everyone else? Why is this happening to me? Why, why aren't I like everyone else? Why do I get treated this way? Why do I feel this way? Why do I have to go through that? That stigma that weighs on individuals from the outside is also an internal dialogue that they have with themselves feeling that they've somehow caused it, that they're weak, that there's something defective about them, rather than just understanding that mental health issues are just health issues. And you're not right, wrong, good, bad, sick, weak. You're just struggling with an illness and a condition. I didn't know that I mattered. I didn't know that it was important for me to make choices in my own best interest. I didn't know that there were coping skills and tools out there that would help me to improve my self-worth um, to the point where I didn't have a mirror in my house until the age of 50. One thing that individuals with anxiety and outsiders need to understand is progress, not perfection. You shouldn't want to try and get like 100% better because that's not like necessarily going to happen, but just like doing like just a little better is good like it's you know any kind of progress is good oftentimes as people come into treatment they expect to be symptom free completely while that's a lofty goal and may not necessarily be realistic and so understanding that as they're making changes they are going to be making progress and an individual who may come in and say, well, you know, I had another panic attack. I'll follow that up with, well, when was the last time you had one? And maybe the last time they had one was two weeks ago or four weeks ago. But when they initiated treatment, they were only having panic attacks, or they were having panic attacks on a daily basis. They're involved in counseling or that they are consistently taking their medication or they are reaching out and making social connections and that they are taking better care of themselves physically with diet and nutrition, exercise and sleep. Perfection tends to add to my anxiety and um, really is very beneficial in facilitating a panic attack. Um, so what I find is recognizing that it's okay to do my best and reminding myself of that has been very beneficial. <laughs> Um, as long as I do my best and I don't try to um, overachieve, um, which comes from my lack of insecurity and, you know, my, well, I should say my insecurities um, and my lack of acceptance of who I am, um, that's beneficial. I am working on that right now. So, yes, I struggle. Um, immensely with perfectionism and honestly truly believing if I just try hard enough I can be my own definition of perfection. However, while a ground to treat carefully, there are still ways to help those affected by anxiety. 
the most supportive thing someone can do is just be a friend talk to you about your feelings help you get through uh what you're going through just helping you distracting you that's what's always helped me someone distracting me going over to someone's house playing basketball for an hour or two leaving your phone at your house that kind of stuff really has helped me i think the most important thing is to just let me have some space and to speak speak gently and just say hey i just want to let you know i'm here or you know we're going to be okay we're going to get through this um but don't let me know you're there by talking don't don't touch me or get too close to me just speak gently just kind of like just be understanding about it and just like try and help them and like understand what's wrong because that's again like my family had or my sister and my mom both have panic attacks and uh like when like they help like each other they'll just like be like just tell me about something else to like get you to distract it or like you know and like just kind of just try and just help the person not think about it sort of Anxiety and panic attacks are not phases of life, nor can they be switched off in an instant. However, society deems it as a lack of strength or immaturity. Stigmas relish in society when it comes to mental illness, often running deep to the point of being framed as common knowledge. It's in human nature to generalize and make assumptions about people, as it's impossible to know everyone you encounter in your life on a personal level. But the true failure of a person's humanity is not going beyond those assumptions to learn about the individual. So the next time you hear anxiety or panic attacks, take the time to learn instead of living based on your assumptions and nothing more. Because like physical illness, mental illness comes with its own brand of scars. Scars that lie beneath the surface. A surface bound with stigma.